Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Humankind. So, last episode, we got through the first 20 turns, got our first city set up, which we have renamed to Cairo, uh, based on a suggestion in the comments. I'm fine with the, the name Memphis, it's just, I, again, I always associate it with uh, Memphis, Tennessee, even though Memphis was a large and very important city in ancient Egypt. Um, but I like Cairo. I think that's a, a good name for our, our starting city. Uh, we also got our first district being set up, so that'll be done in one turn. Uh, let's go ahead and end our turn here. Uh, yeah, we got a battle done. Uh, oh, also I wanted to show you guys these markers here. So when you click on this here, this is a heads up marker that has been addressed to, I think it's been addressed to everybody. Uh, you can't address it to everyone or a specific country. And it's just the Assyrian saying that whatever's on this tile here, they are specifically interested in. Uh, it could be like a resource or a a territory and they're just telling everybody they're they have an interest in that and they don't want you messing with it and you'll see the AI do that throughout the game now you can make markers as well but I don't know if the AI cares about those at all I don't know if that like matters to them so we're gonna just go and get all these units moved and then we got a, a deer here uh, we're not gonna fight that guy uh, we're just gonna move over to this location here uh, we are kind of low in health here and our unit will not be healing himself uh, unlike civilization where your units can heal anywhere, uh, you know, they heal faster in your own territory and slower in enemy territory. Uh, but unlike civilization, units can only heal in this game in your own territory. However, what, one thing that's really nice is that they'll heal in your own territory regardless of if they move or, or do an action or not. Uh, so they'll always be healing. And I really like that because I always hated when I had to like move a, a unit into my territory and just let them sit there and wait for them to heal. Uh, just put them on the, uh, you know, you'll go to sleep until heal button. Or in this case, it's called regroup. And yeah, I always hated having to do that. I like that they will heal as they move around and do things. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's go to get all these units moved. Remember, we have only three scouts now because we did lose one in that battle. Uh, last episode, we got some gold from these carcasses, uh, but we were able to at least kill her scout in return, so they just kind of killed each other. Uh, we're moving this guy over to this district here. Now, before we end the term, we have to figure out what we're going to do with this new territory that we just added to our empire. Now, you'll notice that it's not not blue uh, because it's not part of a city. This is just uh, you know an outpost. That could be snatched away from us if anybody was to attack it. Uh, and they, they don't even have to declare war on us, as we saw last episode. Skirmishes could happen in neutral territory, and outposts are considered neutral territory. They're not part of your empire. Uh, somebody does not need to have open borders with you to enter that territory. Uh, so somebody could seize this from us. Uh, so we have to choose what we want to do with this. Now, we could always leave it as an outpost. If we leave it as an outpost, we can't build in here. However, we can make use of the resources once we get this tech here, I believe is the one we're currently working on. Yeah, the Artisan's Quarter. Uh, that'll allow us to uh, get access to these luxury resources. So there's two ways for us to capitalize on these resources to gain access to those. If we were to leave this as an outpost, it is not able to like use its citizens or its production that it's getting uh, to build anything in the territory. Uh, the only way to get access to those would be to use influence. Uh, once again, we have to get the tech before we can do it. Uh, we can use influence to move our outposts. So you can always move it to a new location if you don't like that location. And that'll cost you a little bit of influence. Uh, then you can also use influence to build a few things here. Again, there's not a lot you can do uh, in the in the outpost. You can construct uh, harbors. Uh, that'll be one of the few uh, few districts you're able to get inside of a territory that is not, you know, a city. And then the other thing you can get is the type of buildings, the type of districts that uh, take advantage of the resources. So in this case, it'd be the Artisan's Quarter. Uh, so we can construct those as well using influence. Again, influence is a very important resource and a very difficult resource to get. And so we might not want to do that. And what we could do instead is use production by adding it to the city. So that's always one thing you have to consider. You know, do you want to use influence by keeping it as outposts? Uh, or do you want to go ahead and add it to a city and then you can just build those uh, resource gathering uh, districts. And we're already going to add them to our city anyways so that we can get uh, all the production and food from here. I think it's mostly production. And the way we do that is you just select the city you want to add it to and then click attach, which is again going to cost us some influence here. So no matter what, we're going to use some influence here, either to attach the city or to build 
you know, the uh, artisan quarters on these two, uh, it is going to be more expensive doing it the other way. If we kept it as an outpost, it would cost us more influence to get both of those constructed. So we'll just be using our, our production for that. First, this Let's go to enter turn. We did get our unique culture. district completed, I which is that Egyptian is pyramid. It's going to increase our uh, influence gain lasts. here. And it's also going to give us a bunch of, of production. And most importantly, you'll notice that it takes away stability. So you get negative 10 stability. That's what districts do. Uh, now, there are a few districts that add stability instead. That's their main purpose. But most districts will decrease your stability usually by about 10. And that's the main thing that reduces stability is the districts. Now, what's really powerful about the Egyptians here, or any uh, any country or culture, I should say, that has the builder affinity, is that they get that 10 plus stability when completing a district, meaning that you essentially don't lose any stability from districts. So it's very, very powerful uh, because you can just build as many districts as you want and not have to worry about stability, which is the main limiting factor when it comes to building districts is because they cost stability. I had one person mention in the last episode that they've launched several series so far uh, from other, other YouTube channels and that everybody seems to always select the Zhao for their first culture, the uh, early China dynasty. Uh, as their first culture, and I think the reason for that is because they uh, we could attack this deer here, I suppose, for a little bit of food, uh, but then we'd be we'd be injured. So I think we're gonna wait. Let's just go in advance. Uh, we can take out this sanctuary, then it'll get us uh, some gold. I said food; it would have got us uh, gold attacking him. Uh, so yeah, let's go and ransack this this outpost. Uh, although I do kind of want to leave some of them up, just so we'll have lots of deer walking around. Uh, but you know what? Let's go ahead and get the gold here, guys. There are already are quite a few deer walking around here. Yeah, I think the reason why they all go for the, that early Chinese dynasty is simply because of the fact that they are very much focused on the science. And, you know, everybody knows that science is very, very important in these type of games. But as I said before, science is a little bit less important in this game than it is in, in the Civilization series. It's still very, very important, but it's not as Im as important as it is in Civilization. And there will, you'll see several reasons for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and get our district set up here. Uh, get our, our outpost set up, excuse me. Because uh, we're going to be adding this territory to our empire. But we don't have the entire territory uncovered yet, so I don't really know what's up there. So there might be a better location for this. What we really need is some food, guys, because we already have a production outpost over here that's going to be getting us production, and there is quite a bit of production up along here, so we could potentially... I'm not seeing a, a location being marked, by the way. Yeah, they're not marking anything as the uh, most favorable location. Oh, it's down here, that's why. Yeah, I guess they want us to set up there because they're saying, you know, this is the, the best location for us to go to. But normally they, they mark it in the uh, the territory that your unit is currently in, so that's kind of strange. Uh, so we don't really know what the best location is. Let me see if I go a little bit further in if that'll if that'll change. And then we'll just do it next turn. I mean, regardless, we'll probably, you know, search around the, the territory to see if there's any ones that are better than the ones they suggest. But it's nice to see, you know, what they're telling us is the one we'll get the most uh, resources from. So we still don't have this tech yet. We get it in three turns. So we can't capitalize on these resources just yet. And we also don't really have the population for building a unit. So we'll probably go ahead and get ourselves either a district or you could get the lumberyard, which would give one plus industry on a forest or woodland, uh, which I do think we have some forest here. So that would get us get us a little bit of production, about two production, uh, not, not a whole lot, honestly. Uh, but it is helpful a bit later once you have a lot more forest uh, that you're making use of. Uh, we can get the pyramid uh, again, despite the fact you can only get one per territory because we now have another territory, guys. So we can add the pyramid over to here uh, to get more production. Uh, however, I really feel like we should get a farmer's quarter because we are not earning very much food, and I think it would be helpful. Uh, so the options here, you get four food there, you get three here, and only one right there. Well, we know that we're going to want to expand this way and uh, try and get farms all through all, all along this river here. I think this will mostly be production up along this river because production can get bonuses from rivers as well. And we already have a production uh, district here. So I think it makes sense to uh, focus on, on production along that river and thus this will be our, where our farms are at. So you'll see we're, we're losing four production by building the farm here and only gaining three food. 
So it's really not a, a good location. Eventually, we're going to want to to build up along here because the the farms will, uh, you know, benefit each other. As you you put them next to each other, they'll get bonuses, and, and thus you'll get a lot more food from that than just what you're seeing here eventually. Now the game is indicating that we should build the farmer's quarter over here that they would get 10 plus food, which is quite a bit more than what you're getting over here. Uh, but we're not gonna do over here because this is a very production heavy zone, guys. And so I think it'd be wise to instead do production here, at least something that capitalizes on the bonus that you'll get from being next to the marble, which I don't think, yeah, food definitely wouldn't. Yeah, I think this is gonna be more a production zone, guys. So despite the fact that we can get food there and uh, a lot more food there, we're gonna do it here, because again, this will eventually, uh, you know, result in us getting a lot more food than just the plus three. Uh, so let's go ahead and build it there, and then we'll just kind of start putting farm quarters uh, all up along this river here. And what's really cool about the the farmers' quarters or any of the the districts is this is not representing like farms. Uh, you can see we already have farms on the exploitation tiles, which we automatically get. This is representing where those farmers live. So. It results in a much prettier city than what you get in like civilization. Uh, and it looks like the Assyrians yielded to our demands. They accepted it. Uh, I think we demanded money from them. So yeah, we ended up, uh, you can see there's no longer a crisis here. And so we got, I think it was like 100 gold, wasn't it? So that's going to be super helpful. Will allow us to like race through this farmer's quarter. So we're going to get that. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and get another farmer's quarter because that first one we got, remember, was not very profitable. We only got like three food from it. Uh, so now when we build the next one, we're going to get even more food uh, because it's going to increase the food by uh, here by one. And then we're also going to capitalize on two more locations along the river. Uh, so we're going to get five food. And as we build farms up along this river here, they'll become more and more profitable. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the farmer's quarter there. Uh, but most of our food will likely come from a different uh, district. Uh, different territory because we're just not getting very much uh, from here. Uh, we're gonna go and attack this deer just because we got the the hill advantage. Although it might end up moving, I guess he's in the forest. But yeah, we're gonna go and attack him and uh, should go well. Uh, we're just gonna go and stay in the same location, and we're gonna go and let it attack us because remember we have the uh, the forest bonus here. Uh, now it looks like the the deer doesn't get any forest bonus itself, but again we can. Uh, do a lot more damage if we let him attack us because then we have both the uh, you know the the high ground and the forest bonus so it's just better to do it that way all right so we could go ahead and attack him uh, and that would likely destroy him but we're gonna go ahead and end the round and let him attack us again because it's just uh gonna save us in health if we do it that way all right so we defeated the other deer we don't have any more movement points Let's go ahead and get this guy moved over to the sanctuary where we're going to ransack that for the, the 22 gold. And then this guy is the one we're trying to set up an outpost here. You also notice that it's going to cost 20 influence now to get this. It's getting more expensive. So let's go and see where we want to put this. I mean, this kind of looks like it's going to be another production uh, district. And it's, it would be more optimum to go for food over here, but... The reason why we're, we're coming over this way is because we know that if we don't get it soon, the Assyrians will. Uh, you can see that she has already marked her interest in these gems. Uh, so we really need to move over there if we want to even have a chance of getting that. And I don't think we're going to find a good food location here, though. Which is fine. I mean, it would be nice to grow quicker. I'm just looking at all the possible locations here. Uh, it looks like it's going to have to be another uh, production zone, though. You get 25 right there. That's not too shabby. Uh, you are in a bad location though unless these are on the cliffs oh these are on the cliffs so they can't it can't be attacked by by C uh, another option would be to stay up here here we're getting 25 and five of that is food which we do want more food and you know what that might be the best location yeah because this is 23 yeah that might actually be the best location you got 22 right here I think that's where we're gonna we're gonna put this uh, plus we'll be down by the river over here uh, but I think that's that's actually another district, so it's kind of irrelevant. But yeah, I think that this location is fine. Uh, and then you just kind of build out this way and build up here. Although you might not be able to build up here, actually. Yeah, building up here would be troublesome uh, because you got the mountains in the way. So you wouldn't actually, you'd have to build here first and then up this way. But yeah, that's, that's clearly the best location and it's the one we're going to get the most food from. So we're going to found it right there. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and, and try and go after the gem territory immediately after. All right, so let's go ahead and end our turn. And we might take a look, see if we can't get that 
farmer's uh, quarter a little bit faster. 203 gold, so we're not going to be able to buy it out right now. But that's the main thing to use your gold for, or, like initially, is just trying to speed up your your buildings and your uh, your units. I've got a mammoth over here. Let's go ahead and actually make sure we reveal the entire territory here. And I suppose we'll probably keep pushing south. Now, we do have a little bit of territory here we need to uncover. We still got to go up north here. Uh, frankly, we need more units. We don't have the, the population to support that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we uncover all this territory here, just because there might be something special there that we want to know about. Uh, looks like that's not the case. Okay, well, that's everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and move up to here then. Yeah, we'll go over here, just uncover that. All right, so the district should be getting set up here. We also got the calendars research. Excellent, that's gonna be super helpful, uh, getting access to those unique resources, those luxury goods. So we can go after city defense next. That'll allow us to construct warriors. We can't get that in six turns. Uh, other options is the flood irrigation, which would get us two plus food on the river. That'd be really helpful. Uh, this will also give us a public fountain, one early way to get a good chunk of stability. Uh, but again, stability is not going to be too much of an issue because of the fact that we're the Egyptians here. Uh, stoneworks, that's always nice because you typically have all your industrial zones in mountain stone fields or rocky fields. Uh, you can also do the forced labor, which I think is the one where you, yeah, you basically give up population to get things constructed. Uh, kind of like the Civilization, was that Civilization 4? Where you like, it was like you had slavery and you'd, you know, basically kill... Uh, some of your civilians to get something constructed quicker to rush something uh, that's essentially what that is you're just rushing with population instead of with money there's the harbor as well uh, given the fishery and this would give us access to that copper which I think we have don't we yeah so we would like to be able to capitalize on that and, and get access to that uh, these are all 17 turns though let's go to get the the six turn city defense so that the first unit that we build would be a warrior once we're able to uh, get a unit. All right, so these guys have the outpost set up. I wasn't gonna go this way, but I kind of want to get whatever this is. Uh, so let's go and grab that real quick, and then we'll we'll go a different way. Uh, I think we're gonna come over here next. Uh, but we'll grab that before we do. And then with these guys here, I guess we're gonna continue going south for at least a little bit longer. Let's see what's in this district here. And then I guess we'll go ahead and raid this sanctuary as well. Let's go ahead and get that gold. Uh, we did find a new resource here, an unknown strategic resource, and this guy's been blocked. Okay, I'll have to go up this way then. I, I think this is just coastline up here anyways. And he doesn't have any more move points. So let's go and enter turn. All right, so got a little bit of gold from that. We should have rushed that. Uh, but that's fine, we can rush the next building. Uh, which is going to be the artisan's quarter so that we can go and get access to these resources now which one we want to get access to first is going to be based off of uh, the actual benefits of them so with marble we get one plus industry per workers which we do actually have a worker here we're going to say expert policy so that i can manage my uh, workers myself and we're going to put them all in the food for right now so we can try and get our population up higher i think that would be uh helpful uh so yeah if we built the Artisan's Quarter here on the marble would get the one plus industry per workers, which only applies if we're actually putting some of our civilians there working on industry. Uh, but we'll also get a plus 5% industry per marble. So every marble resource gives you a benefit, which is really nice because in civilization, uh, I think every resource, with the exception of when you have special uh, bonuses that apply to you because uh, you got like a certain wonder or whatever. Usually the extra resources are just for trading. There's really no other benefit to having extra luxury resources. Uh, of one type, I mean. Uh, so you get the, the initial bonus from them to amenities, and then you don't get anything else. But in this game, every single marble resource you have, or, or whatever resource, is going to give you a benefit. So it's always uh, beneficial to get more than one. So yeah, this would get us more production, so that'd be helpful. Uh, porcelain would get us more money. I think production would probably be more useful initially, so that's the one we're going to go to get first. All right, awesome. So we're gonna get that Artisan's Quarter built here in two turns. Can we rush that? Uh, it's, no, it's a little bit too much. And that gets more and more expensive as you go. Uh, so that got us 40 gold, excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and go towards this district here. 
Again, to try and grab that before the Assyrians do. And he's just going to continue going down south. Just kind of see what's down here. There might be another uh, civilization down here. We'd want to know about that. All right, just some more deer. And then up here, we'll just uncover this last little area. There we go, beautiful. So yeah, just some coastline up along there. And then we'll go ahead and head on over this way. All right, so I think that's our turn. Let's go ahead and end it. Now we can add this outpost to our city if we wanted to. Uh, it gives more production. Would cost us influence. I do want to take a look and see how much influence this outpost is going to cost us, though, because we want to make sure that we have enough. Uh, it's going to be 80, so yeah, we don't want to add the city uh, until we have enough, because uh, then we want to make sure that we can grab that outpost immediately. We don't have to sit there and wait for uh, influence. All right, so let's go to get these animal remains, more science, and more influence. And we actually, because we discovered the Great Barrier Reef, we just got our city defense researched. So that's excellent. Let's go ahead and get something else here uh, started. It looks like we have some excess science remaining, so it's going to get applied to this tech here, which is now only going to take 14 turns. Uh, so let's go to go after the... Uh, uh, let, me, let me see if we have copper. I want to say we do. Uh, here's the Great Barrier Reef, by the way. And that actually unlocked... Our first star, uh, which was in the science, in the science area, uh, so we got this for getting four techs. The next star we'd get would be from seven techs, and that'd be our second star. And then we can get one more, and then that's all the stars we can get in this era from researching techs. So there is no way to only use technology to move to the next era. You gotta like combine it with other uh, other stars. So you gotta get a total of seven to move to the next era. Uh, so the Great Barrier Reef also got us some fame. And we can hover over it to see what we'd get if we had this inside our, our borders, which would be plus five influence and then some stability and money as well. So yeah, we, we definitely want to get control of that. And there's another horse source down here, so that's nice. Uh, but I came into here to look to see if we had access to the, the copper. We do. It is currently in the territory that we own, so might be beneficial to go ahead and grab because I want to say that we might need that for a unit. Uh, yes, we need it for the spearmen here. So we can go after the copper and that would also give us the the forge that we can construct and the watchtower. I really feel like food is probably the the issue right now though. So you know what? Let's go to go after the food and then we'll do uh, bronze working. So yeah, we'll grab that first. Because I'd like to build some units, and we just don't have the food to support that. Uh, so there wasn't anything here. Okay, so this all connects like so. We never finished uncovering this little spans of territory here. Probably not much. This is probably a coastline right here. All right, well, let's go and start moving over towards this way. Got some uh, goodies there that we'll, we'll grab up. All right, so we now have our first luxury resource, increasing our stability and our industry in our city. And that was purchased by the Assyrians immediately. So we already got to see how this works. Uh, so she gives us 30 gold to get access to our resource. So that is now being used by her as well. What is it? And we just got the 30 gold from it. Now she doesn't have any resources, so we're not getting any benefit from that outside of the 30 gold. And then you also get gold from trade routes too. So you can see the trade routes on here because we're exporting, we have to click on export to, to see that route and you can see where it's going and these can be raided which will stop the route and uh, earn the, the raider some money and so you can see this going all the way around here up to her territory so that's the the export route and as of right now she's benefiting from the trade but we are not hopefully she gets a luxury resource that we can purchase from her otherwise not really any benefit for us trading with her and she's only helping her which you know I was thinking she might be a potential friend but now with how close her territory is and the fact that I think we're gonna be fighting over this gemstone territory I think we could very well end up being enemies just over that that territory uh, so let's go to grab this it looks like we're also done exploring up this way I don't know if I'm gonna continue over this way we're pretty far from our territory and I really want to go up here 
And we only have one scout that we're currently using to grab districts, and we could be doing that a little bit quicker. Uh, so we did finish up the construction of the artisan's quarter, and that's how we got access to that resource. Uh, we're going to get the next artisan quarter to go ahead and get this resource here, which is that that porcelain. That'd be pretty helpful to have. All right, so let's go to enter turn. And again, I think we're going to be moving this guy down. We're pretty far up there. Uh, Cairo just got another population unit. And we got that gold from ransacking this location here. Uh, let's go all the way down just to see if there's anything over here. Nah, there's not. All right, so this unit will be moving up as well. He is done exploring. Uh, I guess we'll we'll go this way. And then we'll, we'll move up north. And then he can help us get control of districts. Uh, so with that curiosity over here that did get us a little bit more money uh, with this guy let's go ahead and have him go this way now and let's see this unit is in place so we're going to want to claim this territory before she does and again i'm really looking for somewhere that has some dang food and i think it's going to be best to put it up along oh well no the borders are right here so that's not going to get you a lot Okay, so it could be up there. That's 21, and just saying that's the best location. And it's not a terrible location when it comes to food. It's not a very defensive location either, though, which I do expect this territory is going to be uh, a flashpoint. There's going to be a lot of fighting here. But yeah, we might just have to go to that one just because we need the food uh, that we can gain from that location right there. But yeah, I really don't like putting it here because it's a horrible defensive uh, location. It'd be really easy for her uh, to attack that, and if she was to attack it, we would not get any defensive bonuses. Where, like, let's say if we put it up here, then, you know, she'd have to, you know, at least come up on this to be able to attack us, or put it up here. But defense cannot be the only thing you have in mind. We've got to consider the resources that we're going to get, so I think we are going to end up going there. Just for the food, guys. Yeah, it's unfortunate that none of these other ones will, will grant us much. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it right there and get that food. She's going to be quite unhappy with this, I think. And what we're going to have to do is leave the scout here. That means this scout is is done. Uh, we're going to station him there to defend this location because I expect that she's going to come in here and attack it. And she already notified us that she is very much uh, interested in that, that territory there. Uh, so you can see that we are moving out our territory through these outposts. But again, it is not in our empire yet. That is... Still considered neutral territory. This one here, we do want to get the ebony. However, nobody's going to be settling this one. It's not that big of an issue. Same with these ones. They're not attached to anything else. So we can always wait to get those. Uh, she is now trading for our other resource. Just saying that she's interested in that. All right, and then he's still moving over to there. But he got blocked, so we're going to have to do it again. All right, and then this guy here, we're gonna go ahead and start uncovering this. this Just see what's over here. over here. Maybe gather some more uh, goodies, some more gold and, and research. Go. Oh, there we go. All right, so the city Cairo has finished constructing that artisan's quarter. Uh, we don't yet have the technology to take advantage of the copper. Let's see what else we might wanna get don't have enough influence to attach any further territory to our city. Not yet. We would need 80. So yeah, let's just go and get something constructed here. We've got a lot more options available to us, and I think we're going to go with the... Uh, well, we have the, the 2 plus food along the river now. So you'll see we're getting a lot more food here. We have three farmers set up here, and we're going to keep three farmers there, because again, I'm trying to really focus on food initially here. All right, so we're going to want to get the Egyptian pyramid, which we'll have to build in this territory, since we, of course, already have one in that territory. Now, it's saying that this is the best location here, and that's because it's going to allow us to capitalize on these three uh, tiles. Uh, that'll add that to the tiles that we're currently working, so that's the reason why that's so high. It's also boosting these ones. We have to consider where we want to build our districts. Uh, because remember, you get all those adjacency bonuses. Just because this is the highest now, because we're extending uh, the tiles that we're working on, doesn't mean that that's, that's where we actually want to build this here. And I'm thinking that for the production side of things in this territory, that it would be better to move towards the mountain, uh, where we'd get a lot more production. Uh, I think all this area here uh, would be very beneficial. So we'd want to extend out this way. And with this one, you're still getting three tiles added. And you're not getting as much production because you're not next to the two resources here. 
but I also feel like it might be better to, to instead have like a uh, a merchant quarter down here because uh, the merchant quarters get uh, a nice bonus. I think that's what they're called, merchant quarters or something like that. The economic quarter, the one you get money from. They get nice bonuses from being next to the uh, luxury goods as well. So that's something to consider going out this way with the, the merchant quarters. So yeah, I think we're going to build it here. It's two less production, uh, but I think that's fine. So I was going to build that right there just so we can get through this construction a little bit faster. And this is what those farmer's quarters look like, by the way. So they're just just buildings. And so yeah, I really like that. It results in your cities looking like cities, you know, with, with neighborhoods and stuff, rather than like uh, a weird collection of like farms in between your your uh, town. I don't know, it just kind of looks looks odd for a, a big city. It's fine for like a, a village or whatever. They have farms right next to them, but when you have a city and it's like, you have farms all in between the town areas and mines all around. It's just kind of weird looking. I think the cities look a lot better in this game. Uh, so they have already accessed that, that porcelain. That got us another 30 gold. Uh, let's see if we can't rush this. 405. Uh, next next turn we should be able to rush it. I keep trying to do that and I keep forgetting. Alright, so I think he's just going to go ahead and move all the way up to here now. And he's going to capitalize on that. Get us a little bit more gold. And that got us another achievement. Obsessive. You see, we already have some independent peoples walking around. Uh, so with the independent peoples, there's many different things you can do with them. Let's see where they're located. So they already have a town here. Yeah, that's not that far from us. So independent peoples can be enemies, or they can be friends. Uh, so you can attack them, they can attack you, they can raid you, uh, based on your, your trust level. Once you get the patronage up to a certain level, which, by the way, you'll notice that we already see a patronage from one of these countries here. They get patronage which every with every single of the independent peoples, even ones they don't even know yet, uh, which is kind of strange. I don't really like it. I should have took them off, actually, because I think it's that one guy's ability. And I really don't like it, because it results in you never being able to annex any people without destroying that empire, uh, because you can't annex anybody if there's another empire that's friendly with them. Uh, it will result in you never being able to annex them. Uh, which is really unfortunate. It completely removes a mechanic in the game, you know, being able to annex independent peoples, which you can get a bunch of, like, bonuses to make it that easier and cheaper and stuff, but you can't do it. It's impossible to do it as long as this guy's in your game because he will always get to friendly way before you ever do. Even if you were to boost these up uh, and spend a lot on it, you still wouldn't get there, I don't think, because he's just always earning it, like, all the time. So, very, very unfortunate uh, that I forgot to, add, to take that guy out because I don't really like uh, his mechanic. Uh, since it removes uh, an important mechanic in the game. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, can annex them if you don't have this guy in there. Uh, so you can annex them, you can trade with them, and you can hire them as mercenaries. And you can do all that with the exception of annexation uh, when you have that, that one empire in there. And that's, that's the only thing he stops. But it's kind of irritating. We need to get this sanctuary taken out so that we don't have to worry about independent peoples rising up there. Let's go ahead and grab this here. Eh, get us a lot more gold, excellent. And you know what, we're gonna wanna make sure, and so I don't forget, we're gonna do it now. Go ahead and erase this Egyptian pyramid. Uh, that got us the Builder Star, which remember that's you know our culture's you know main way of getting fame. So we get a nice bonus for that. So you can see we're getting a lot more fame uh, from getting these stars. Uh, that's not a lot more, it's 10 more in this case. But still, it's a bit more uh, fame from doing the Builder Stars, which we get those from getting districts. So we have six districts now. And that got us that, uh, that bonus. Uh, looks like there's somebody else over here. Well, that's interesting. Let's go see who this is. Let's see if we can find him. Uh, we'll have to wrap up around here to locate him. And maybe some more independent peoples right here. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of people not that far away, or at least on the same continent as us. Uh, so with that Egyptian pyramid finished, uh, let's go ahead and see what we want to get next. Probably two plus food for farmers. That'd give us a total of uh, six more food. Though a tile would probably get us a bit more at this point. If we look here, we get five there, four right there, uh, eight there, which again, I don't really want to build on this. On this location here and the reason why it's getting so much is because again it's it's adding more tiles that we can we're actually working while this one is not adding as much remember we're going to start getting some good adjacency bonuses a bit later on so these farms are going to really 
start earning us a lot more food. Uh, yeah, it would definitely be more beneficial to use the four turns to get the granary here than to get a farmer's quarter. So that's what we're going to get, guys. Uh, where is our population at? We're at three, so we're going to wait until we finish building this granary, and then we're going to go ahead and get a unit built. Probably a warrior. Since we could end up finding ourselves at conflict soon, or in conflict soon. All right, so let's go to enter turn. Uh, we could also attach this here, but I think we're going to focus on getting control of districts before we ha end up having like problems with independent peoples. Because uh, yeah, you can see that they're they're rising up everywhere. So yeah, let's go ahead and hurry up and get out of here. Although it looks like it's not letting me go through here. Here we go. Oh, okay. Is this a cliff? Is that why? No, no, we can get down. Okay, not sure why it was blocking us there. Again, you'll see that Empire is already increasing the patronage of them. So, I mean, you could always, like, use the money to try and bribe. Let me see which one we'd want to do. Like, is there any resources down here that are critical? Let me take a look at this one up here. At least this one doesn't block you off. Yeah, I just don't see spending the money on it right now. And, and trying to compete with him when he just has the, the passive bonus. Uh, but... One thing I didn't mention is that each of the independent peoples does have like different statuses here. So like these guys here uh, are violent. Just take a look at these ones. They're peaceful. So one we're clearly going to probably have to fight. While the other one we won't uh, likely have to fight unless we were to attack them. So if we were to work on either one of them, I guess we can go in and bribe them. We'll spend a little bit of gold trying to at least try and get some patronage. I think he's getting two plus right now, so yeah, it's it's we can't even catch up. I don't think uh, so. Not without you know spending a lot of money on it, and I, I really don't want to spend influence on it. So yeah, we might end up having to fight these peoples here. But on top of their their status, they also have ideologies, which can you know agree or disagree with you. That's something we haven't really taken a look at the ideology system because we haven't really interacted with that yet. Uh, but this is the ideology system. Uh, you know, there's you know you, you just kind of move along this, this scale here. And uh, the four different meters are collectivism versus individualism. You have homeland versus world. You have liberty versus authority. And tradition versus progress. Uh, the, the All these are pretty clear, I think, uh, on what they represent, uh, except for this one. Th this is essentially like nationalism. You know, caring, you know, putting your country first above others. And this one's, you know, more of, you know, internationalism. Uh, you'll also notice when we had that clicked on, you can see that we have different, like, cultural setups here. Uh, so we actually have some cultural influence from the Assyrians because they're so close to the Assyrians. Uh, we actually see that they have some cultural influence on this territory as well, as do we. We have some in their areas. Uh, but, yeah, definitely starting to see some competition here. Uh, we're going to go in and grab up the... Uh, the gems here. I mean, the whole reason why we grab this is so we can get the gemstones, and we will have to use influence for that uh, because we will not be able to add them to uh, our empire anytime soon uh, to our city. I don't even know if we would go that far uh, because it gets really, really expensive to add additional territories the more you have. Uh, so I don't think this would end up going to Cairo. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get the artisan's quarter there now so that we can take advantage of that resource. All right, so I was going to get these guys moved. Remember, we're trying to figure out who the hell is over here. Let's move right here for now. Let's see if they're identified. Not yet. Yeah, still haven't been identified. We might have to go inside their territory, which I'm not sure if this is. It has the the solid border here, so I want to say that might be part of their empire. So we might not be able to go in into that that territory. All right, so let's so go ahead and get these the guys children. moving back home. Luck, they'll prefer thinking and oh. meditating to unleashing their chariots. Okay, so we, we met her. Is Life she the one up here? Okay, not? that looked kind of red to me. Uh, but yeah, I guess that is pink. So we met her. She's a very friendly civilization. She's open and trusting. Uh, she's a patron, free rider, and inclusive. That's her, her bias. So yeah, we met her. I'm sure she'll probably contact us about uh, trading resources. And right now, we're just really giving benefits to everybody else. Uh, we're not getting very much for ourselves outside of a little bit of extra money. 
Uh, so yeah, I don't know if we'd want to grant that to them when they say when they ask us. Uh, but yeah, we met her. Her uh, capital's right over here. Okay, so she's not that far away from us. Uh, let's go and get these guys moving over this way now, since we can't go inside her her territory. Uh, we met her because her unit moved right up to the border to say hello. All right, so let's go and get this guy moving. Where do we want to set up the next uh, district? I suppose we should figure that out. I'm going to move him over here for now. But yeah, where do we want to set up the next district? Uh, we knew we had to grab these two. We don't know what's over here yet. We'd have to go explore that. There's nothing right there. We, we want to get this one here for the horses, because as of right now, we don't have any horses. And then getting the ebony here would be pretty useful, too. But we need a, a good food territory, which we don't yet have. I don't think this one would grant a lot of food. So yeah, we kind of need to add this one next, I think, to Cairo. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be necessary. Add this one to Cairo so that we can get the uh, the food district going. Because Cairo doesn't really produce very much food on its own. Those farming quarters have helped a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it could be much better overall. You intrigue me. And we knew that she would contact us about the trade luxuries. And this time, we're going to demand uh, some money in exchange. That's really not much, though. Now, if we refuse, then we give her uh, a grievance. And she can always try and force the, the, trade, the trade treaty on us with war. Yeah, we can counter and get 15 gold, but man, that is not very much. And that's based off of, I think, their their economy. Uh, so because it's early game, it's just not worth very much. But we should be able to get something from this. So, you know what, let's go and counter with that Maybe. and see if she agrees. No? She refused. Oh, okay, yes. that's good. I actually didn't want to give it to her. But I didn't want to give her a grievance either. All right, so let's go ahead and... I guess we can go and explore up along here, but we already know that we're probably not going to get control of any of this territory. It's just too far away. Also, it seems like she has an independent peoples here, too. Uh, kind of worried about the defense right now, because, yeah, we have enemies all across this area here that we'll probably... Uh, we'll need to get some defensive border set up, I think. It's obviously not a major issue yet, but I think it will eventually become a problem. All right, we're going to go into this territory here so we can get, uh, you know, the outposts set up. I think that's the next, next uh, location to, to grab. Now we can also set up one more city so we can turn any of these outposts into a city. It can only be an advantage. Uh, it looks like two of our outposts have grown in population, which again doesn't really help at all. Uh, with the exception of getting stars for population, and then of course when you add that to a city or make into a city, then you'll have those population there. Uh, so the world of your, your word of your empire has now reached the Babylonians. So that's the civilization, Agamemnon, uh, who's currently playing as the Babylonians. Probably mispronounced the name, uh, but he's early. He's from the early Greeks historically. Uh, he's the one who attacked Troy, and he's a uh, cruel and a militarist. I'm not sure where he's located. We're going to want to find that out, though, because he's definitely... He's a more expansionist than he is militarist, honestly, based on his his traits here. Uh, but yeah, that's one way how he'll, he'll act. He'll prefer to use military power to reach his goals. He currently wants access to our trade goals, uh, trade goods. We're going to just straight up refuse him Once again, because I don't see how he doesn't become an enemy because he's already irritating me. <laughs> so he's up here. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up being enemies. So, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. We could end up uh, wanting to be friends with with her. We do need to get the hell out of here, though, uh, because he could very well destroy this guy. Uh, he, yeah, he might come across here and attack us, and then we'll just have to try and retreat and see if we can't get out of here. But yeah, starting to find all the empires and their locations. That's where Babylon is. So Babylon is actually going to be in between us and her. So yeah, I think she would end up being a fantastic ally. So something to consider when we do uh, any diplomatic relations with her. Uh, if we build a wall, that'll stop anybody from coming into our uh, provinces around the city that are being worked. So the wall goes all around these. Any ones that we currently have uh, that are being worked. Uh, now, it wouldn't go around the exploitation. You can see a little fence here. You can kind of barely see it. But wherever these fences are, that's where the walls would be built. And then they just continue to expand as you expand your city. And nobody can go into the walls uh, without doing a siege, which can be quite difficult to do at times. 
so yeah, walls are, are very, very helpful uh, in the game. Um, much much more helpful than they are in Civilization. I really like the walls because they protect all your, your territory. It's also one way to block people too. Uh, block people from moving through certain areas uh, by building like a garrison because a garrison can be built anywhere and they get the walls around them. Uh, so yeah, it's just one way to, to block people from going to uh, certain areas. Just one uh, strategy you might want to use. So we did get that population unit and so now I feel like we have to get ourselves a fighter. So let's go and get a warrior built. It'll be done in one turn and it's going to take one of our our population units uh, so these guys have entered into this territory so let's go ahead and figure out where we want to set up this next outpost this is going to be a food based province so we want the highest food uh, which would be that 14 it looks like so that's where we're going to go ahead and place it not as high in food as I would like uh, but overall we're not in a an area that has a lot of food it's a very mountainous area, and I really like the way we have this constructed. We're like up on top of this plateau, you know, where it's it's a mountain, you know, it keeps going up. Uh, think about how much lower this is to this location, because each one is kind of like stepping up here. Uh, so I really like that we have Cairo like up on top of the mountain here, right in the center of this uh, this very strange looking continent. I like it though, it's cool. Uh, so we also got another population. So that's, we just basically poured that into the, the warrior. And now we're gonna to wanna to figure out where we want to, to send him for defensive purposes. Where are we most likely to be attacked? Uh, it looks like we already got attacked, nice. Uh, so we'll have to go and take a look at that, who's currently attacking us. So if I had to, had to guess, I'd say this is probably the most threatened place. So let's go ahead and move him down that way. And then what we'll have him do is just sit outside this location because as soon as he gets here, we'll move the scout out. We could use the scout for further exploration. And we are also able to create our religion. So religions are not as in depth as they are in civilization, uh, but they're kind of similar in some ways. Uh, you level them up and, and give them bonuses and such. Uh, but everybody seems to get their own religion for the most part. And then they're all trying to spread it to your empire. But yeah, it's, there's not as much depth to it as there is in the civilization. I think that's something that will be worked on in an expansion. Uh, but here in the early game, you get to pick uh, polytheism, polytheism or shamanism. So polytheism is multiple gods. Uh, and I think that's the one we're going to go with. Uh, this here gives you one plus faith per population. This gives you five plus faith per number of attached territories. This one I think will result in a lot more faith overall though. Because let's say, you know, a city you might add four territories because it's per number of attached territories. So you don't get it for the base territory. So let's say you add four territories to the city. That's going to get you a total of 20 faith when your cities will often get, uh, you know, especially like the capitals will often get very high population and that'll continue to help you through the late game. So I think this one actually results in more faith. And you know, that's the one we're going to do. I did polytheism in my, my last campaign or the, the current one that I'm doing right now, the one I showed you guys uh, where I was playing as the Franks, although now I'm playing as Korea. Uh, I have gone to the next, uh, I have moved to the next era and I'm playing as, as the Koreans right now. Uh, but yeah, I just went that, with that one. So we're going to go with Shamanism this time. And that does result in us getting a lot less faith early on than the other one would have. Because uh, yeah, that would have got us five faith immediately, where right now we're only getting four. Uh, but yeah, it will quickly uh, be beneficial, I think. So we now have the option to get the Stone Rings. Uh, which, uh, which one of these you can build is based off of which one you pick. I don't know if there's a difference between the two. And th these are the Holy Sites. Uh, I think they both give the same thing, 20 faith and 20 stability. You only have one in each district, or in each territory, and on top of that, you can only have a certain amount of holy sites across your entire empire, and you can increase that number uh, through a variety of different means. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty helpful for the stability, but also for the faith, so you're, you're uh, sending your faith out there. I don't know that we're going to build this first, though. Our stability is not too bad. Uh, the main thing you want to consider when it comes to stability is that you're above 30%. Once you hit 30%, then then you go into like a, a mode where you could base rebellion uh, the, the lower it gets. So you want to keep it above 30% essentially. Uh, there are reasons to keep it higher because there's some modifiers for like them being happy and stuff. Uh, but for the most part, 30% or higher is, is fine. So we're, we're good for right now. So we're not going to build that. There's, there's so many other things that, that we can currently use. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is go ahead and get... We've got decent food right now. I think we're going to go ahead and do one more 
farm location over here. Just see where we can uh, get the best bonus. So we're gonna get a plus five right there. Yeah, I suppose we'll do it right there. Although this would open up additional territory for us to capitalize on. But let's, let's go ahead and build it right here, guys. Uh, that'll help when we get more adjacency bonuses. So yeah, we'll build it right there. Uh, we have our event here for animal magic. As the harvest season draws close, the common folk are worried. With many farms scattered across the empire, last year an infestation of rodents, largely rats and mice, plundered granaries. However, rumors have it that one enterprising village m mitigated the problem by using cats. But you also know that sellers use a new kind of predator named a ferret. Which of them will you employ officially? So with many of these events, the, the main thing they do is impact your your society, your, your you know policies. And this one doesn't do anything else besides that. Uh, so th there might be a follow-up event, but I don't think so. I don't, I don't recall any follow-up events for this one. And so essentially we can pick cats, which would move us further towards tradition, or we can pick ferrets, which would move us further towards progress. Uh, you can always take a look at any time at what benefits those would grant you. Uh, so moving towards tradition results in you getting more faith. So here in the middle, because uh, in the middle you're getting 10 plus stability. Uh, but here in the middle between these two, you're going to get 5 plus stability and 2 plus faith, and then 4 plus faith. Uh, going towards progress does what you'd expect. It gives you a modifier to your science output. And that's what we're going to be going for, guys. So we're going to go ahead and do ferrets so we can get that bonus. Uh, so we were attacked here, and it looks like we were attacked by these independent peoples. Okay, I didn't know who was attacking us. We're going to try and retreat and see if uh, we can get away, because we very much would, would not win this. So, will this independent people be an ally or an enemy? A barrier or a blessing? I wouldn't be surprised if he attacks us next, which put us in a bad position because we won't be able to retreat again. Unless, you know, a turn had passed, which would let us retreat one more time. We did get the irrigation. Excellent. That flood irrigation is going to be super helpful, man. We need that for the 2 plus food, because uh, yeah, I'm not happy with the food production right now. And now we're going to go for bronze working. And the Babylonians now feel differently about us. Probably not happy about us entering their territory. Is that their territory? To what do I owe this? Uh, they're not happy about the, the fact that we rejected that treaty. And so right now he's uh, aggressive towards us. So very well might end up attacking us here. I guess we're going to come down south this way since we're already moving through this territory. So let's go ahead and try and uh, uncover this and, and just hope she doesn't attack us. I don't think so because I think she's one of the more friendlier uh, rulers. So you would think not. All right, so he's got that outpost set up. Excellent. Could have boosted the, the farms to get those done a little bit sooner. Uh, in fact, we don't have enough money to do that. Okay. All right, let's go and get him moving. Oh, I got to move this way. Though there's there's his uh, outpost location. It might end up being defended. And we want to kind of avoid him. So yeah, let's go and grab whatever this is. Get us some more money. Excellent. I got the outpost being set up. It'll be done in three turns. The next location we're going to want to expand to is probably down to this one since you got, you know, two ebony resources here compared to the, just the one. Though there is that strategic resource, not sure what that is. Uh, but I think what we have to do is go take out that sanctuary before our independent peoples gets built there. And I really don't want another one right here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go and take them out first. Uh, go get get that, that wiped out. That'll get us some more money too. It's always helpful. All right, so we're going to end our turn. And then this is going to be the last turn here, guys. Somebody else got another religion, got their religion unlocked. All right, so let's go and get this scout moving out. The uh, soldier's going to protect that location, and then the scout's going to come up here and, and do some more exploration. And I feel like we have to protect this because, again, I, I do expect the Assyrians, you know, we know they want this location. And so if anybody was going to attack anywhere, it would be here. Uh, we have another battle here with the independent peoples. We're going to try and retreat and get out of there. It just feels like we just can't get through here. They just keep on attacking us. And it could end up being these guys attacking us next. So it's unfortunate. Poor little scout can't get out of there. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and end our turn here. Though we're going to get that farmer's quarter uh, rushed.
and we already know what we want. We want that flood irrigation to get more food here. Just trying to get the, the city grown as quickly as possible so we'll have more uh, civilians. I think what we might do, let me see if this will speed it up by a turn. It would not. Okay. What if we put two over there? No. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll just we'll just keep it going for the four turns then. And just focus on, on growing our city. Alright, so that's going to be the end of today's episode. Uh, we have discovered quite a bit about our map here. And yeah, I think this is going to be a very uh, contentious uh, playthrough. And I'm, I'm shocked with the number of independent peoples. I did not see this many independent peoples in my previous two playthroughs. There are a lot around this area. So I, I do think that there will be a lot of aggression towards them as well. But you can look at their, their indicator here to see you know, whether they're a violent or a peaceful people. So we got two peaceful ones and, and two violent ones. So yeah, I, I do expect there's going to be a lot, a lot of conflict, not just between civilizations, but also with these independent peoples. Because uh, yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, I usually don't see this many. That means that we haven't done a very good job destroying these uh, these sanctuary locations. So yeah, we're going to try and get that one taken out so another one doesn't rise up. Because uh, that's the last thing we need. There's quite a few as it is. Uh, so I think this is going to be a very contentious playthrough. A more aggressive one. Uh, which should be fun. Because uh, I really like the combat in this game. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy today's episode, though. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one, which will be on Monday. We will have a Monday episode, even though we don't usually have Monday episodes. Uh, we're going to have one this Monday. So I do hope to see you guys on that video, and thanks for watching.